All righty, welcome to the Pre-Launch Profit Podcast. My name is Tucker Forwerda, and thank you to those who are watching this right now live and not live. Uh, but right now, I have an amazing guest, and it's actually funny. We've been, you know, we've been catching up with each other throughout the years, and it's fun to actually reminisce and go over everything that's happened within the past couple of years. But I want to formally introduce Ellie Bursko. Uh, she is a business and mindset coach, and she is absolutely, absolutely crushing it right now when it comes down to growing a business, not just a business, but it's a multi six figure business. And I give it probably a year or two and she'll hit that million dollar mark. So, uh, Ellie, welcome. I'm super glad to have you on this interview. And yeah, if you want to add anything to, else to like the conversation or the interview or just more about yourself, uh, feel free mm -hmm. to go ahead and do it now. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. And, uh, yeah, it won't be a year or two. It'll be the next three to six months. That's <laughs> right. There you go. Cool. Yeah, so close. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it's been it's been great connecting and, and I guess reconnecting as well. Um, yeah, uh, like you just said, I've got a multi six figure business um, close to the million right now. I started out as a personal trainer uh, seven years ago. I've been in business seven years this month, actually. Wow. And uh, and over time, I then sold that business and then stepped into business and mindset coaching. And I, I've got clients at the moment in eight different countries around the world. Uh, I travel a lot. I went to 14 countries last year, which was oh, a bit tiring nice. by the end of the year. I bet. <laughs> Uh, one of them was actually um, Richard Branson's Island, which was amazing. And okay. um, my life is really just about delivering as much value as I can to my clients, really transforming and changing their lives and uh, creating amazing experiences for myself and my family as well. Sweet. That is so cool. I love the little last part that you said, just because it's mainly about family, right? It's all about family. Um, so I know you have a very interesting backstory. I know that you didn't start off all at once, like a successful business and mindset coach, right? Like it took some, took some mm. like deep searching, some inside searching, right? Wow. But what were you doing beforehand when all of this stuff started? Yeah. So I actually, I'm, if we go right back, and I don't know if I've shared this with you before, actually, but I'll go deep. Um, go deep. When, yeah, when I was younger, I was actually, um, my dad kicked me out of home when I was 19. He couldn't handle me. Uh, I was craving his attention, but he would work away a lot. He, would, he had his own business. Both my parents did. And okay. they separated. Uh, they separated when I was 16 years old. And I stayed with my dad, and I just was craving his attention. I, and I would... Um, try and get his attention in the wrong ways. And uh, I started doing drugs and drinking, throwing parties. My dad couldn't handle it anymore and kicked me out of home when I was 19. Okay. And that actually made me uh, go like more <laughs> down in the bad path. And I started dealing drugs to make money, um, entrepreneurship, right? But just in the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got in trouble with the police and um, and I had some abusive relationships as well. I was really destroying my life. And it hit a point where I was like, something has to change. And in 2008, I decided to go back to England where I was born and go and live there for a year, uh, be with my family and travel around. And when I was there, I decided that I would never be treated like I had been from these guys or from anyone else, that I am worthy, that I am deserving, and that I'm going to create a better life for myself. Cool. And that didn't start straight away. I was still, you know, hooking up with guys and doing drugs and things like that. But then I met my um, my partner, and I know we were just talking about this before, an American yeah, yeah. usually a boyfriend. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we met and he'd never done any of that kind of stuff before. And so he got me off that kind of stuff. I wanted to be a better person. Uh, yeah. And we'd only known each other three months and I actually ended up um, getting pregnant. When okay. we were hitchhiking through Portugal and Spain, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> and uh, he stood by my side, luckily. And we moved back to Australia. When we were in Australia, we literally had no money. We were living, uh, I, I was working until I was 39 weeks pregnant. I was walking with my big belly to work because we couldn't afford a car. Yeah. And uh, I, it was, you know, after I finished work, when I had my daughter, when she was really little, we were living off welfare. And I decided that I wanted to create a better life for myself and my family, that I wanted to be able to create freedom and choice and uh, I decided to start my own business. 
And at the time, that was the the personal training business that I mentioned before. Cool. And then that's what the thing that you ended up selling, correct? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, the reason I went into that is because I'd lost a heap of weight, uh, 29 kilos, which I think is maybe 45, 50 pounds, something around that in seven hey, months. Yeah, after having her. And I wanted to help other moms do the same, but do it in a healthy, holistic way. Cool. Uh, cool. There were no boot camps in my area that had babysitting included. So I found that gap in the market. I attached it also to my own journey, what I felt I could help with. Okay. And I was the first one to do that in my area to create these boot camps with babysitting included. And I, I invested in a mentor early on. I grew that business to six figures and then multi six figures within a year and a half. Um, but I'd kind of grown in that journey and I'd really worked a lot on my personal development and I wanted to help people at a deeper level because of the success I'd created. You know, there's, there's so many business coaches that haven't created any success themselves yet. Right. And so I, uh, I made sure that I'd gotten to at least six figures first before helping anyone else that I'd hired a team, that I'd created systems and actually ended up selling that business before I then stepped into business coaching. Gotcha. Cool. Well, I I think it's safe to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I love the extremes of your past history because those extremes, um, and they, you know, to the normal person, to everybody else, it can, it can, it can seem very negative. It can seem very, you know, tolling on a person, but you've got this one side extremes, but then you carry it now over to where you are now. Again, another extreme that most people will never, ever experience. I think it's because of the negative extremes that has taught you a lot of wisdom to then pro uh, progress, sorry, to then progress into the current extreme you are, which you are now, which is complete freedom, right? Yes. Yeah, totally. And it's interesting you bring that up because those extremes, I used to be a very all or nothing person. Okay. And so when those extremes changed from um, escaping with drugs or alcohol or sleeping around or um, things like that, they actually then became, I was still doing that same pattern, but in a, I guess, a healthy way, um, but it's still not healthy, right? right. So I was I was hustling in my business. I was work, you know, I couldn't switch off. Um, I got my energy and my happiness from my business early on. And then it became, um, I was escaping with powerlifting. I competed at a national level with powerlifting for three years. Oh, I remember that. And, yeah. And um, so I just, I repeated that same pattern just in a different way. And so it actually took a good few years of me working with a mindset coach, working my own personal development, journaling, meditating, and um, and letting go of that pattern, letting go of my past, uh, changing my mindset to not have to escape anymore, no matter what that was. And I finally come to a place over the last probably six months where I don't escape at all anymore. I stopped binge drinking in 2015. I don't drink at all now. Cool. Um, I had my last drink in September of last year, which was literally one drink. And I had that one drink. And after that, I was like, I don't even want one drink anymore. You know? Yeah. Good. Uh, That's awesome. yeah and I eat well and I exercise and I don't um, escape into my business anymore. And, you know, a lot of people medicate themselves or they escape by being busy or binge watching Netflix, procrastinating on Facebook or with food or alcohol or whatever it is. And I don't do that anymore because I'm happy within myself because I've worked on myself and because I've created balance and I'm not perfect. Obviously I'm, I'm continuing to grow and learn every day, but my main focus now and over the last year it has been, has been still growing my business, obviously, but really focusing on my own health and wellness and also on focusing on my family and being present with them and creating amazing experiences for myself and for them as well. Cool. See, and here I, I'm going to go and ans like ask a question, like what does it take to like grow a multi six figure business? Right. But I think you've already been giving those seeds. I think you've been planting those seeds already of what it actually takes. You know, a lot of people, they go after entrepreneurialism. They go after all these things when you can do it and it can produce like what you want. Um, but like, it still takes like that balance that you were talking about. Cause I know some people they're like, Oh, um, okay. She's telling me that I can be still happy and, um, you know, not, do a lot of these things and then I can go and do this. But again, I think there's, there's still that happy medium that has to be met and that balance that takes place. Cause you can, you can be, you know, happy,
but it seems like sometimes people look at happy as like laziness, like, oh, I'm happy with how things are going. And I know my business yeah. will grow by itself. Right. Yeah. So happy doesn't mean complacent, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. That's what you just brought up. Really. It's like, yeah, you, and this is something I worked on a lot. You don't, we have this view that if I'm not pushing, if I'm not constantly working, then I'm not going to be successful. And it's that extreme. It's one or the other, but it doesn't have to be one or the other. And so there's a difference. There's a real difference between going from the zero to 100K, then going to the 100K to the multi six figures or seven figures. Okay. And okay. so what I've learned in creating, you know, now a $600,000 business is that going from the zero to 100K is, is about working hard. You do have to hustle a bit. You do have to push because no one knows you. You probably don't even know yourself yet. You need to work on your own personal development. Okay. And um, and you also need to start, you know, building a list and putting yourself out there and getting clear on your target market and your message and your offerings and what you're actually doing. So that does require work to set that all up. Um, but it doesn't mean that at that level, even though you're working probably more and harder than at those higher levels, it doesn't mean that you've got to have no sleep and, and um, you know, be like crew and all that, <laughs> all that crap. Um, it means still look after yourself, practice self-care, eat well, sleep, drink lots of water. Uh, you know, when you are giving back to yourself, when you have energy and balance, you're then able to show up as um, an inspiration, inspirational leader for others. You've got to practice what you preach. And then when we jump to the multi six figures or the seven figures, obviously I'm, I'm close to seven figures. I haven't hit it yet, but I have helped clients get to seven figures and I've surrounded myself with a lot of people that cool. are making seven figures as well or multi, multi seven figures. And the difference there is that you actually have to do less. And that's hard. It's like, what? You know, it's like it doesn't make sense to our brains at first that you've got to do less to be able to grow. Okay. But the okay. thing is, if you're working in the business and doing all those little tasks, you can only keep yourself, you're keeping yourself small, you can only grow so big. And so at the multi six figures and beyond, it's about creating systems and automation and structure in the business. It's also about hiring team to be able to support you in your journey. Uh -huh. And yeah. uh, it's about getting those higher paid clients as well not just doing a lot of the kind of lower end stuff, but you could be working less and actually, and, and actually have less clients, but be making more money as well. Gotcha. That's really, I loved, you had so many golden nuggets in there and I liked how you said you have to work less to scale more. Basically that's, that's really cool. And I've never actually thought of that. Um, in mm -hmm. that way, I know that, you know, growing a business, growing, you know, something you need to be able to, to disassociate yourself with your business, you know, work, mm -hmm. How is it said? Like work on your business, but not in your business, yes. um, and allow it to like fulfill. So I also like what you said um, that that first, you know, zero to hundred k should basically be you hustling and grinding and basically earning your right to say, hey, this is my six figure business. And then after that, you can then take a step back, kind of see it from a bird's eye view, and then allow yeah. the systems to take place and the teams to come in. But if you haven't earned it, and I tell this to all the time, like. If I have earned it, then I've earned it. If I haven't earned it, then I just have to work harder or smarter or whatever I have to do. Right. Um, totally. you know, so, so yeah. for instance, last, um, I'm not, I'm not at all at that stage yet, but I know that one day I will be. Um, but like for, for last year in December, I promised myself that I wouldn't take a certain amount of client or like a certain pay. Like I would only accept like, you know, three to $5,000 on up. And I wouldn't accept mm -hmm. like $99 or all those smaller prices. Right. So because yeah. I did that, I had a huge mindset shift, which basically scared me. I think it scared like my internal being and I probably yeah. could have made another 10 K month in December. Um, but basically I was not expecting the results that were going to come in. Cause I was getting call after call after call, but I, mm -hmm. I think I self-sabotaged myself to, Mm. Um, just a little bit because I said like, I'm not going to do this, but still yeah. I didn't get those higher prices because my circle of influence couldn't afford those higher prices. Yeah. And so I should, I should have taken the small, you know, bunts if we're talking about baseball or the first and second and third bases, but I was trying to go for like 
grand slams and home runs every single time. So yes. that helps me. That helps me a ton, actually, what you just said. And I hope that this also helps, you know, other people um, as well mm -hmm. who are listening to this. So what does that's, it that's take? That's a really good point. I, I just want to touch on that, uh, that I, I, my very first business coach, uh, oh, there's a bit of echo. <laughs> How's it now? That's better. Yeah. Okay, go, go my, for it. My very, my very first business coach, uh, they started telling everyone to do, you know, a $5,000 online program. And this is probably, you know, uh, I was with them for a little while. This is probably maybe six years ago now. Okay. And so many people dropped off everything else they were doing and just sold the five grand thing. But they didn't have that audience yet, just like what you said. And so they're bashing their heads against the wall, getting frustrated that it's not working. And it's not, when I say, you know, put in a higher end thing, don't, you don't need to just do your higher end. I yep. really believe in like the ascendancy model, which is have your free offer to generate leads, have your low end, your mid-level and your high. And what I found is the high end is really easy to sell. What, the way I started selling my high end was having people in the low end and the mid-level who'd got, get them amazing results, give them massive value. They're going to step up and do more. That's how I started that. Now, just recently, only over the last few months, I've started attracting a lot more people in who are already at that higher level and will just jump straight into my VIP. Cool. But what I needed to change to be able to do that was I needed to see myself as that leader that could um, deliver at that level. I saw it before, but it was like an even deeper knowing recently. And I had a limiting belief that uh, people had to be a client first or they had to do, you know, this program first. Whereas now I've I've dropped that belief and I, I've literally attracted in what seven. Yes, yeah, seven new people have joined my VIP in the last month, um, even over Christmas, you know. That's so and, cool. Yeah, thank you. And it's because I saw myself in a different way. I really believe in my program and it's very different to what other people are offering. I, I over deliver a lot. And then I started just kind of like there's this thing i have probably heard of it called reticular activation and it's like when you buy a red car and you see all these red cars it feels like everyone has a red car oh, okay interesting or, yeah you know you well not you obviously your wife's pregnant for example and then it feels like everyone's pregnant <laughs> um so it's like we have these blinkers on and that that's all we see and what i believe as well is that's based on our values and our belief system and our identity we attract in um, what we believe to be true about the world or what's kind of priority to us in our lives. Okay. So when I made that decision that I'm going to focus on VIP, I, this is the exact type of person I want to attract in. And I believe that I can deliver at a very high level. I started seeing these people everywhere. And even if I knew nothing about them, they just put a post in a group or something. I'm like, I need to connect with that person. And literally all these people have been flowing in. Whereas literally maybe a month or two ago, I was like, Oh, like, where am I going to find these people? I don't, you know, I'm just speaking to these kinds of people and these others aren't coming in. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, I just bought a car, like a new car the other day. It's a Volkswagen and I've only been noticing Volkswagens now. <laughs> yeah. on yeah. the street. That's so totally. crazy. And I'm glad that you bring that up. Um, I didn't, I have heard about it. I didn't know that that's what it was um, called. Uh, yeah. But anyway, just off, off topic, topic a little bit. But so, that is so cool. And I know that for me personally, like everyone, everyone and their dog, everyone and their grandma has those self-limiting beliefs because we're raised in it. It's, it's, it's natural, but not only that though, but just the current culture that you're living in can cause some, you know, some mindset shifts or some different beliefs that might not be true. And I like how you know that you said that you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, but that you believe that you're worth it or that you can believe that you can deliver and then right yeah. after that, you made that internal decision to go and do something. And then everything started coming towards you because you were focusing on that. So whatever you yeah. focus on expands, right? So that exactly. is so that is so cool. And I really do appreciate those golden nuggets. Um, so with with someone, I mean, for, for instance, this is a perfect example for me. I'll throw myself under the bus. With me personally, um, I know there's a lot of people who are doing awesome things. I know that there's a lot of people getting awesome results and doing good things. Uh, with me personally, I think that I'm attracting good people. I think that I'm attracting, you know, kind of okay people. Um, but I made a decision again last year and this year to go after a certain, you know, 
um, a certain level of client, those who can pay, those who can afford it, those who have systems in place, those who, um, mm -hmm. you know, have advertised before. And I think, you know, it takes some trial and error to find out, okay, I like this, but I don't like this. So how am I going to improve? So for someone like me who has had, you know, five figure months or whatever, how, how do you get that person to then, uh, you know, for example, you've got your, you've got all your masterminds and all your VIPs, right? How do you get someone to go from here to here? Um, you know, when it comes down to a certain amount of money that you can make in a, in a type of month, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, so I had a client who was, he was consistently doing around four to 6,000 a month. But um, it was very, it was up and down. I say consistently, but it was kind of up and down between those figures. And when he joined my course, literally within two weeks, he had his first 10K month. And then wow. he hit it again the, the next month in December, um, even though he had time off over a little bit of time off over Christmas. And then he hit it again in January within three days of January. Um, and this is like, this before was kind of a dream to him. And it was a number he just couldn't hit. And so we just broke things down and made it simple. Um, the, the biggest thing for people I find is that they're trying to do too many different things. They have no focus. And what really helped me last year, um, you know, I, I sold in one of my programs, I sold $250,000 um, into just one of my levels last year. Okay. And the strategy I used for that, this was all organic, by the way. So the strategy I use for that that relates to my client and, it, and what we were talking about is that I got really, really clear on the outcome from my program. So people need to get really clear on what is the result and what is the outcome that you want your client to achieve um, or potential client to achieve. Um, and then from there, it's like, how can that program deliver it and how is it different from the rest in the industry as well? Then you need to get really clear on the ideal client, um, on the message that you're putting out there and tying that into the way that you can help them. And then starting to put that out there on social media, whether it's in paid advertising, whether it's on your personal page in your free group, um, being on interviews, you know, being seen in different areas, but just choosing what those areas are, not trying to do it all at once if you're not doing anything at the moment or, you know, if you're doing a few, just adding one or two more on and just really showing up and being seen where you're talking exactly to that ideal client, to the struggles they're facing and to the results or outcome that they want to achieve. Interesting. And just be laser, laser focused on that. Forget about everything else. Go all in on that one program and then you can expand from there. You know, you don't have to do that forever. Um, but most people, as entrepreneurs, we're really creative and, you know, always having ideas. They might be great ideas. Some of them are probably not, um, you know, but you don't need to implement them all at once. Focus on one main area and then you'll get results so much faster and you'll also reduce overwhelm. Gotcha. That is so cool because, again, I signed up for that. Um, we were talking before this call, but I, um, I signed up for a lot, like, you know, I've signed up for a lot of programs and they were all random, like selling on Amazon FBA compared to selling affiliate marketing stuff, which is completely mm. different. Um, but this year I've now made the decision to like go and only focused on like service-based work. So anything that comes up like service-based opportunities, um, that's where I want to spend my focus. No e-commerce, no anything. Right. So yeah, it's cool that you said that. And we're going to go into more of the organic side of things later because I'm a, I'm a paid I, I like I like organic. Obviously, I'll go organic all the time, but I like paid as well. That's that's kind of my yeah, forte, right? Of um, but how? So, so I, I like. Sorry, I was just catching my thought. So I like how you said that you were doing like did, like focus on that one thing because I had so many different things that were going on, right? Like yeah. how to get consulting, how to write on you know large publications, how to pitch on stage, how to get a lot of clients all at once, right? And so I yeah. like how you said that. Perf get yourself professional in one area, streamline that, get those results, and then you can branch after that. But I think a lot yeah. of people, because there's so many options that they get sidetracked and then they actually spend one to five years like I did trying to pick what's best for them. 
Yes. And what you just said as well about organic versus paid, organic can get you really far. Um, it can definitely get you to, to six figures very easily. But if you're wanting to grow to seven figures or, um, or beyond or also having consistent flow of leads um, and reach out a wider audience that don't already know you, you need to do paid advertising. Gotcha. And I'm like guilty of that. I, I've done it, but I haven't been consistent with it. And that's really the next step for me. I know once I put that in place and a couple of other things in place that I'm working on at the moment, mm -hmm. that's why I said I'll hit the seven figures in the next three to six months, because it's literally just that marketing piece and knowing my numbers a little bit better. Um, that is the, the piece that I need to put in place to then be able to really take that leap quite fast. Done deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously paid advertising is going to work great for you. And then funnels, like everything that you have now, right. You know, put those inside of funnels and put those inside of memberships. I'm sure you're already doing those, but yeah. Yeah. that will help you a ton. Um, so let's dive into now the organic side of things. So how, how, and what are you doing to grow all of this stuff? Like, is it mm -hmm. posting on Facebook? Is it YouTube? Is it Instagram? Is it, you know, cold calling? Like, what are you doing to actually attract and sign up people, you know, $25,000 per year or whatever your program is that you're focusing on. How do you do that organically? Hmm. So most of it, yeah, it's all on Facebook, really. Um, okay. Most of it is uh, on my personal page on Facebook. Um, I post, you know, stories and tips and, and things like that on there. I get people sending me friend requests like every day now. Um, so uh just accept the ones that look interesting <laughs> or if we've got a heap of mutual friends. Um, right. And so, yeah, I'm connecting with a lot of people that way. And also in my free group and in other people's free groups as well. Okay. So most people that do that, they're just posting kind of posts that are just really talking at people. Whereas I'll share exciting things that I've got going on, like about when I went to Richard Branson's and um, I'll ask questions and I'll, you know, share like really valuable information. And I form a lot of connections with people from different groups and from my personal page and things like that. So that's where most of it comes from. There's obviously a part of it is referrals and word of mouth as well. Um, right. But that's literally how uh, the main way that I've grown. Cool. So do you, do you, I know a lot of people, they have different like things. Do you, um, so that's cool. Let's narrow it down. So you basically post on your profile, you post you know, certain things. You also post inside other Facebook groups and you're basically attracting those people to you um, with mm -hmm. attraction marketing, right? So do you, um, do you like message people when people add you as a friend or do you just kind of like let them yeah. see? Yeah, you do? Yeah, okay. so anytime, yeah, anytime I add someone or they add me, I send a message saying, hey, um, thanks so much for connecting. Tell me a bit about yourself or something along those lines. Cool. And, um, then, you know, some people never respond and it's like, why did you add me? <laughs> you know? right. Um, but then I've made some really great friendships from that. Either they've either become clients or they've become a friend or, um, you know, we've helped each other out with something or I've jumped on, you know, an interview or, I've interviewed them. There's just amazing connections to be made with people. And, you know, I'm usually when I get to about 2,600 people on my Facebook friends, I usually God. cull it by a few hundred. Um, I'm not one of those people that necessarily wants to have 5,000 friends on Facebook right. um, because I want the right people on there. And I don't want to just connect with as many people as possible that I'm not going to talk to or we're not in alignment with the way we're living our lives. Right. That's cool. So do you, I mean, do, have you had the same Facebook profile since you've been, since you've started basically, or do you have like a business profile and then like a personal? Cause I know there's a lot of different controversy when it comes down to, do I only add business owners? Do I have two separate accounts? One for family, one for personal, meaning one family, one personal, and the other one business. Like, yeah, no, so I've been on Facebook since I think 2007 or eight or something like that. And so even before I started my first business, um, it's funny, I was looking at a um, memory the other day and it said I just drank a, le a, a bottle and a quarter of vodka. And I was like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like past Ellie is gross. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's cool that you said that's disgusting and that you're not going to take it back, right? <laughs> No. Um, so yeah, my, my profiles definitely changed over the years, but I've always had the one personal profile. I definitely have a business page as well. Um, and 
I, I don't have a separate profile for family or for business because my, 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 I am my business as in like my business isn't completely me, definitely. Um, it's separate from me, but it's part of me and my right. business, is my life as well. And obviously it's a part of my life. It's not all of my life, but I don't separate the two. And so if people, you know, I have had friends in the past that have not been friends anymore because they don't like me talking about business or money and things like that. That's, that's their, you know, that's their own stuff. It's triggering them. Um, I'm not going to change the way I do business or helping people um, because someone else can't deal with it. Cool. And as another, like I've inspired my mom and my sister and different people in my family by my posts. Um, but there's other people in my family, they go, oh, Ellie talks about this too much or Ellie's, Ellie's bragging or because it's their own mindset and probably, right. you know, grandparents and people like that, they, they don't understand because it's a very different world we're living in now. And, you know, everyone means well. I, I have a great family, but I'm not going to change who I am or the way that I'm growing my business and helping others for anyone else. Gotcha. So, I, I mean, I asked this question because I know a lot of people, I mean, even me sometimes, we, it's that social media mindset. We care so much about what other people are going to think that either, number one, we don't do anything about it. Number two, we're mm -hmm. scared to do what we know we're supposed to be doing about it. Or number three, we just, you know, we put on, we basically like keep ourselves down at a level that we feel comfortable at, but that we don't like expand or like, you know, get out of our comfort zone. So I like how you said that, you know, it's their problem. It's not something yeah. that you should be dwelling on or focusing on. That's their thing. And you're just going to go about life as you know that you're going to do. And cause like for me, I'll post stuff and you know, sometimes I'm wondering like, am I being too braggy? Am I being too this? Do I need to show more compassion? Do I need to stop bragging? Do I need to, you know, do less? And so yeah. my thing is like, if I was to go that organic route, um, you know, I, and I do, and I've had pretty good success, but not as, you know, not as much as I could have for sure. But how do you go about like balancing, like what you're posting and how you're expressing and what you're you know, focusing on whether it's positive, negative, and then how are you getting people to come to you through messenger, basically saying like, Hey, I want to sign up or, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah so it's, uh, to answer the first question, it's a mixture of things with what you're posting. Uh, if you want to post something that may be negative, um, always share what are the lessons and learnings from it. Okay. So it's not, it's not just a rant, you know, I hate it when people do just like, right. Hey, I'm really pissed off about this. And it's like, so how's that actually helping anyone? Right. Um, and how's that helping yourself, you know, staying in that anger or sadness or whatever the emotion is. So it's actually clearing that emotion and, and learning from it. And you might still be in the midst of that situation. You know, it doesn't mean that you can only share things after you've come through it and created success. You right. can share something that you're still struggling with. Um, but you can be like, okay, here's what I've learned from this situation because that's actually going to help people. And you're, you're, it's then perceived as positive even though there might be some negative in it. Uh, so, and I guess, yeah, having a balance of things that are, you know, looking at what your brand is, looking at your personality, looking at uh, what people want to want to put out to the world. And so for me, I do a mixture of, you know, strictly business posts, um, you know, top 10 lists of things for people, um, promotions or things that I have coming up. But then I also post like silly things my kids said or photos of me on holidays and things like that. But that ties into my business. Right. I'm not, you know, as business owners, we're not robots. We don't need to just talk about marketing or sales or whatever all the time. Show your whole life. Show who you are. And people buy from people, not from businesses. Cool. Uh, and then on the second thing that you said around you know, people messaging me and things like that. I have recently set up a messenger bot. So that's kind of like putting putting people through a funnel. Um, on my personal page, when people message, it's literally just from those friend requests most of the time. But I will also connect with people that, you know, haven't spoken with in a while and say, hey, how are you going? Uh, and things like that. And um, yeah, so it's, it's really a mixture of things. But I do have posts with call to actions for people to jump on a call with me or jump on a call with my team and things like that going on as well. 
Okay. And those are obviously balanced too. Like you don't want to have yeah. posted every single day, like, Oh, join a call, join a call, join a call, join a call. So exactly. that's really cool. I, I'm, rule, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And I mean, that's how, I mean, personally for me, that's how I like to do it. I like to follow the three, two, one method. So three posts, three posts in a row are my lifestyle posts, two posts in a row. Those are my value posts, you know, things I'm thinking about, things I'm going to offer things, whatever. And then one post after that. So six days in a row, I will do my business post. So a direct offer that I'm offering or whatever. And it doesn't yeah, have cool. to follow, you know, six days in a row. It can be, you know, yeah. one like it can be three weeks of, you know, lifestyle and value and then hardcore hitting it like one week of business. But that's the type of, that's the type of posting that I like to do personally. Um, yeah. so let's do this. Why don't we make a pact? I will focus on my organic game a lot more and we'll get you <laughs> to start focusing on your paid game more. Yes. Yeah, good? I'm <laughs> at the yeah. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. Well, let's wrap this up. Um, I really do appreciate your call, your time, the, you know, the nuggets that you've shared. I know a lot of people are actually they're thriving and thirsty, um, very hungry for this type of information. And here you are giving it for free. So I really do appreciate it. Um, before we head off or take off, do you want to, you know, end with like some word of advice or things that other things that you want to say or um, something that you know that the audience will want to hear? Yeah, sure. So it's a mixture of your own personal development. You've got to work on yourself. You've got to let go of any limiting beliefs, anything that's holding you back to be able to show up as the leader who you need to be to inspire and motivate and and help others get the results that they want and change their lives. And that all starts with you. And so that comes down to, you know, your health, uh, looking after yourself, going to bed um, at the right time, getting enough sleep, drinking water, um, eating well, exercising, all that kind of stuff, giving back to yourself, self-care, taking time out. And also managing your week as well. I use Google Calendar. I don't know what I would do without it. Right. Um, but really, you know, managing your time. It's not about working more. It's about working on the most um, productive things, being as productive as possible and working on the highest priorities in the time that you do have. And being present, being present when you are working, being present when you're not working with the people who you're spending your time with or with yourself. Cool. Don't be like getting a mass a foot massage and checking your phone, you know, like be there in that moment and be relaxing rather than doing a million things at once. Yeah. And so when people really work on themselves um, and then couple that with the strategy and then the action, you can get amazing results. Got it. Cool. I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much, Ellie. Um, where can people find you? What's the best way? I mean, we've talked about Facebook, obviously, but where can people find you in the best way possible? Yeah, so feel free to send me a friend request on Facebook, um, Ellie Bursko. You'll you'll have the links, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. So Ellie Bursko on Facebook. Um, shoot me a message so I know who you are, where you found me. Otherwise, I might not accept. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd like to know you know where you're from, and we can connect that way. Um, pretty much everything is under my name, Ellie Bursko. Um, so my business page on Facebook is under that. My website is elliebursko.com.au. Awesome. And I also have a free group on Facebook called Time Hackers. Um, so people are welcome to um, join there. It's about helping people get to six and seven figures whilst creating more time and freedom in their lives. Awesome. Done deal. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ellie, uh, for this all, all this amazing information. Really, I do appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in you know, soon at that three, at that three month mark when you hit seven figures. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. All righty. See ya.